honorable dignitaries, learned yes. respected teachers and students, a very warm good morning to everyone with the blessings of our Guruji, Sri Sri Paramahansa Yoganand, I am excited to announce the commencement of the International Conference. Today, we have the first International Conference on Innovative Technologies and Intelligent System. A very special thanks to all of you for gracing the special occasion with your esteemed presence. My name is Ranjana Gupta, and I feel privileged to welcome you all on behalf of organizing committee of two days international conference on innovating technologies and intelligent system. If we knew what it was we were doing, on it would be called research, wouldn't it? It is on occasion like this, we get opportunities to just test our knowledge and understanding. We look forward to get an exposure about what the best of brands thinks about this innovative issues regarding technologies. Let me first introduce the purpose of this conference. ICITIS will be pathways for various researchers who can sharpen their skills, and can refine their ideas by meeting with peers and their researchers. Interactions with the experts and high level delegates belonging to this field of computer science and engineering can evolve as an event of sharing ideas related to research, fieldings, very field advancement, tools and techniques which can lead to new horizons. As this is customary in this part of the world, we commence any auspicious occasions with divine blessings and light. And that light is testament to assuring in positive energy for our occasions. We will have our customary lamp lighting ceremony now to make this conference a successful one. I extend my warm welcome to the professors of CVS department to do the honor. And I would like to request the audience to rise for the same. Thank you. Requesting the lighting ceremony for the successful one. We'll all request or start with the garlanding of our beloved Guruji, Sri Sri Paramhans Yoga Nanji. अलग बैठे ना Thank you. 
Thanks to the teachers for being there for the inauguration. I extend a cordial welcome to our chairman, Swami Sudhanya Kiriji. Chief Guest, Dr. Ajit Kumar Sinha, and Guest of Honor, Dr. Atish Pradeep. I too warmly welcome Lieutenant General Gyan Bhushan, the Vice Chairman, GP of IS, Forward General, Officer Commanding Gyan Bhushan, sir, have done his MPhil in Defense and Strategic Studies from National Defense College, New Delhi. He is also an eminent author and a military jurist. I express my gratitude for the presence of Brigadier Dr. Anil Kumar Sharma, Secretary GV of YSM, Brigadier System, and he has also done. an independent mechanist air defense brigade i am extremely delighted to welcome our principal sir dr sham pandey and the other dignitaries dr r k divedi sir the director of mca professor emilia balas an eminent professor and engineer dr rigdas lead software engineer at Artificial Intelligence, and Dr. Priyanka Srivastav, another eminent professor from Sarla Bilda University. Let's welcome them together. That we shall start. I would like to invite them, Swami Sudhanand Giriji to please give the welcome to the opening ceremony and to grace the occasions with his blessings. He has graduated as an electrical engineer from I Chennai and served in Baba Atomic Research Monastic Disciple of Sri Sri Paramahansa Yogananda Ji. And he has also traveled all over the India and abroad, giving discourses on how to live teachings of Yoga Nanji that bestow all round success and complete fulfillment. Swamiji, kindly raise the occasions with Re Recording in progress. And to Swamiji, can you grace the occasion with your presence? Uh, Swamiji will join us uh, in a moment. He is trying to log in. Okay. Okay, sir.
Swami ji will join us after a few minutes. Uh, now I would like to invite our chief guest, Dr. Ajit Kumar Sinha, the Vice Chancellor of Rachi University, Rachi, to address the occasion. Ajit sir is also the Director of Central Tassar Research and Training Institute. He worked for entrepreneurship development in the field of silk bomb rearing, seed preparations, and many more. For his entrepreneurship development, he is recognized as Jharkhandrat, Jharkhandratan. Sir, please grace your occasion, grace this occasion with your presence. I request Dr. Ajit Kumar Sinha, the Vice Chancellor of Rachi University, to join us with please. I think sir has not joined us yet. I would like to move further. And uh, I would uh, take this privilege for inviting our guest of honor, Professor Dr. Manish Pratik, Dean of Goenka University, Gurugram Haryana. He is also the president of Next Generation Computing Technologies. In the year 1999, he got an opportunity to work on R&D project for two years in the area of manufacturing and robotics at Memorial University of NF, St. John's, Canada. He is the pioneer in modeling and conceptualizing industry-oriented BTEC programs in computer science and engineering and in collaboration with IBM India. Set theoretical Rajan Transform, STRT is one of the biggest contribution made by him in the area of computer science and engineering, and due to which he was nominated and awarded as Distinguished Academician, a Lifetime Achievement Award for his achievement in academics and research department. Sir, please join us and kindly address this occasion. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, a very good morning to all the dignitaries and the participants. This is a great occasion and I'm very happy to see Dr. Sharma also uh, on the same podium. We have worked together a lot and I have learned a lot from him as well. Uh, so, um, Really speaking, we, today we all are talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning. 
uh, you will get great pleasure. And um, the thing is that this is not a new area. This area started way back in 1950s, and now it has reached to a level where some of its part is being used by uh, common people in their life. Having said that, it has got immense potential. A lot of areas are there, like reinforcement learning, where uh, intelligent system is not developed in order to um, the known situations, but how to encounter the unknown situations. We were earlier talking about probability. Now we are talking about certainty. How more certain our uh, system can become. Robotics is one part. Data analytics uses it. Data security is also using it to an extent. But still, one area is there where I believe that next generation should take artificial intelligence into their forum, and that is into sustainable development. Till now, Whatever research we have done, it has been like human centric. So human behavior, human comfort is at the center, and rest of the things are um, aligned to human um, kind of um, comfort. But the hour of need is now where nature becomes a center point, and human and other elements of the nature becomes the peripheral. So that is where um, I believe that AI and ML is going to play a very huge role in uh, developing those sustain sustainable uh, cities, sustainable forests, sustainable habitat, and sustainable environment. So this is what I believe that uh, this is very good that such kind of initiative and a conference has been organized um, by the institution. And I believe that the scholars will take up certain very ideas in their respective field and then they will carry on to their research work. And next year when we will meet, it will be, it will give us the uh, kind of um, add on to whatever we have learned from this year. So thank you all and wish you all the best. Mm -hmm. Have a nice time. Thank you very much. Sir. Uh -huh. Set a focus for this platform for our speaker to deliver their presentation. Thanks a lot, sir. Madam, you leave the Now I will again. Uh, Start I with sorry, sorry, sorry and I would uh, like to invite our chairman Swami Sudhanan Giriji okay, to sorry. please give the welcome remark for the uh, opening ceremony and to grace the occasion with his presence. Uh, Professor Ranjana, I'll just like to intervene before that. I request everyone who is not uh, is speaking to kindly switch off their uh, audio so that uh, we can avoid the uh, mutual uh, disturbance. Uh, otherwise, other other participants are not able to listen in. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Kindly, okay, kindly switch off the videos who are not speaking. Namaste. You are able to hear me. My yes. audio is open. Okay. I am in a car, <laughs> sitting in. A, we are traveling in a small village in Tamil Nadu. <laughs> and uh, hope the connection is good as long as the connection is good you know that you will be able to hear me uh, this uh, place is called Pakshi Teeth. this is uh, Thirup Thiruparangundram uh, 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 not Thiruparangundram <laughs> so where you know originally some two eagles were supposed to come every day to take prasad from the temple like that <laughs> it's a very ancient temple so anyway I'm very happy that I have had the darshan and prayed for all of you that uh, this conference, you know, is uh, very uh, successful. And uh, you know that uh, the beauty of Paramahamsa Yogananda's teaching, the one who has founded this, uh, the one who has founded this, uh, our Yogada Satsanga, is that 
we need to blend we need to put up some somebody is talking i would request the other disturbance to please unmute their videos okay. okay so you are able to hear me okay so paramsi yoganand ji advised that we combine the oriental ability the ability of the orientals to intuitively understand the things where you know using your intuition you get the whole picture you know that type of that type of speciality was done by our indian saints indian sages and uh, mahatmas and uh, so this speciality combined with efficiency of the west where over so many decades and uh, so many centuries now that technological mm-hmm. development and scientific development so that has been quite prominent Can so you, now this conference then audio band kar do we are in a unique video band kar do audio aa raha hai dekhe at yogada satsang society is founded by paramsi yogananda a great saint of repute who is called hailed as father of yoga you know that uh, he spread this teachings of ancient india throughout the world which is accepted everywhere and now from this setup we are talking about the technological development and what we are looking forward to so this is a wonderful thing because this what our guruji had very much stressed that we should welcome knowledge coming from everywhere and we should become experts in whatever field we are engaged in so if we try to go on in you know uh, innovative technologies we go on using and then trying to improve more and more whatever we are doing at the same time we also spend time with spending time for the inner technology <laughs> you know recently i addressed the students of iit madras so i told them this outer technology and inner technology they have to go hand in hand and we have to give equal importance to both so when you give like that then our life becomes beautiful and you know very balanced and we find that day after day we are finding fulfillment in our life so that is what you know in yogada satsanga we would like everyone all the participant to just keep this principle in mind in developing your inner recognizing your inner abilities recognizing your uniqueness each one of us we are unique as param shivanand ji says we got our speciality we have been created with some special talent so that is to be brought out so as we bring out that uniqueness and we also take advantage of all the developments the modern technology and then we also contribute to that from whatever level, whatever possible way we can so in that way when you do the combine both inner and outer then we find our lives becomes really very fulfilling and successful lives so with that i pray that in this conference that all the uh, eminent persons they are presenting their papers and i am sure that all the participants will be very much benefited and they will be inspired to do more and better <laughs> because that is a slogan we all have to have more and better <laughs> so we want to do more and we want to do in a better way so let us all you know i pray that this conference will uh, create that enthusiastic spirit and enthusiasm among everyone in to explore the outer dimensions and the inner dimensions equally thank you all wishing you thank success you. thank you somi ji for your wonderful remarks and joining us and gracing us with the positive energy thank you thanks a lot somi ji now i would like to invite our chief guest again dr ajit kumar sinha the vice chancellor of rachi university rachi to address this occasion sir is also the director of central tasar research and training institute and he also worked for the entrepreneurship development and for this he is also recognized as jharkhand ratna sir please grace this occasion with your presence ajit sir
Ajit sir, are you able to hear me? Ajit sir. I think that yes, we are catching here, Ajit sir. Hello. A very warm welcome, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yeah, I am audible. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. 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 So may I start? Yes, sir. Good morning to all, dear students, delegates. On behalf of myself and Rajin University, I welcome you all, delegates of the International Conference for Innovating Technology and Intelligence System, organized by the Yogda Satsang Mahavidyale. I congratulate you and I give you all the best wishes for this two day seminar. I hope this conference seminar will help to students, teachers, how to select the subject, how to get the objective, how it will be, a, what will be the methodology and how one will prepare the paper for that, what will be the introductory part, what will be the result part, what will be the material method, number of things will be learned by the student through this seminar conference. So I give you all the best wishes for today's seminar, today and tomorrow, and I will be with you. You initiate all the best wishes. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir, for gracing this occasion and joining us and for your grateful words. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, it's my honor to invite our principal, Dr. Shyam Pandey, for addressing the occasion. Dr. Shyam Pandey has done his BE in Mechanical Engineering, MTech from Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee, and PhD in Internal Combustion Engine. He has over 20 years of experience, teaching and administrative experience, with India's most reputed institution. He has published more than 33 research articles in Scopus and SCI journals and presented many papers in international as well as national conferences. He too have published 12 Indian patents and completed one state government funded R&D project and is also working with several PhD scholars in thermal and material engineering domain. Sir, requesting your admirable presence. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Anjana. Uh, good morning, Jai Guru and Pranam to all dignitaries and participants. First of all, my sincere thanks to the beloved Gurudev, Sri Sri Paramahans Yogananji. Because of him, we are together and we are uh, enjoying this international conference. Once again, I warmly welcome Swami Sudhanand Giriji, Chairman GBYSEI and our source of inspiration to do better and better. Uh, our Chief Guest and Visionary Leader, Dr. Ajit Kumar Sinha, uh, I thank teachers, staff, students of Yogda Satsang Mahavidyalaya. We are feeling blessed. It is a matter of great pride for all YSM Parivar members to organize the first of its kind, an international conference on innovating technologies and intelligent systems. The theme of the conference is extremely important and paves the way for the fourth industrial revolution, most commonly called as a 4.0, which is started from the year 2011. At this outset, on behalf of all GB members, I would like to express my sincere appreciation for the team who worked passionately and diligently to organize this conference. Let me begin with Professor Jayanti Kumari, HOD Computer Application and Information Technology for her managerial skills. Now moving forward, the team who worked behind it, the master architect of ICIT IS 23, 
द नेम्स आर प्रोफेसर खुशबू कुमारी प्रोफेसर प्रियंका कुमारी प्रोफेसर सरोज कुमारी प्रोफेसर अभिषेक विश्वकर्मा प्रोफेसर गौतम सान्याल प्रोफेसर पार्था सारथी चटराज प्रोफेसर ममता झा प्रोफेसर सैयद अजीम अहमद प्रोफेसर रंजना गुप्ता ईच ऑफ यू प्लेड एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल इन दी ओवरऑल प्लानिंग कोऑर्डिनेशन कम्युनिकेशन एंड वाइड स्प्रेड पब्लिसिटी ऑफ द कॉन्फ्रेंस विद इन रांची एंड बियॉन्ड गुड्यूज टू द टीम my sincere appreciation from bottom of my heart sincere thanks to bursar professor pragati bakshi for financial planning and suggesting the team to do better thanks to the student volunteers ujwal mishra and imran they are working tirelessly to organize this program and sincere thanks to our ipoc co coordinator and social media champion professor simrat kaur for providing her assistance to the organizing team whenever they ask for it as a mechanical engineer the idea which will be discussed here today or tomorrow surely continue to facilitate me <clears throat> and people who are into it i observe a transition from purely mechanical driven industrial production units machine system and sub system to heavily modified ones and less and less human interventions are needed now we are living in the era of fourth industrial revolution i would like to just remind you the first was started or rather uh, till late 18th century then wherein the main focus was to use steam and water power to convert the hand operated machine into power driven equipment then the second one was 19th century mainly focus on the use of electrical energy for mass production the third was uh, rather is uh, end up uh, started 1971 the 20th century when it is realized to make use of electronics and internet technology the fourth one is started 2011 onwards we all know that we have nine pillar of industrial industry 4.0 cyber physical systems internet of things big data 3d printing robotics simulation augmented reality cloud computing and cyber security the intelligent factory or factory of the future is not possible without extensive deployment of the internet of things whereas it consists of physical devices embedded with electronic sensors actuators and digital devices are integrated with the software enabling communications tools i can see the great potential to such innovations in automobile since this is my area of research there is a tangible device and interaction possible with the help of wireless network like as we are using the mobile phone they are connected or they called as the things like one device with other they called as the things how they can communicate there are different four ways of communication first way is vehicle to vehicle communication so with the help of vehicle to vehicle communication it can help you to detect the location speed and dynamics of the systems and this can prevent the accident possibility which is saving which will save thousands of lives and the second is vehicle to infrastructure this will help uh, for the vehicle to organize well and facilitate the traffic lights lane marking and toll booths the third one is vehicle to the pedestrians this application is to locate nearby taxi or monitor the estimated time of arrival so that anyone who is traveling he can or she can save the time also it connect with the pedestrian walk walking systems and chain traffic signals to cross a road the fourth one which is very important which you have, might have uh, experience in your real life in one of the vehicle which is called mg hacker which is launched i think 7 8 year ago in india so in this system what is the pos- thing is possible like with the help of voice command you can either run your gps system or you can operate music system and do several things uh with, with the vehicle the next thing which is unique and which again facilitate me is artificial intelligent that the machine can think and operate as a human being interestingly a collective knowledge to is capable to outperform individuals which allow machine to self learn it taking high level cognitive decision it is mainly on the algorithmic level and it is also possible by using the software here machine can solve problem by self expanding its own behavior again it is with the help of artificial neural network which train their software with the time 
so that it can be better and better in taking the decisions like human beings are doing they are learning from their experiences another interesting area which is again uh, some way connects me with my uh, mechanical engineering side is the robotics wherein you can see the automotive manufacturing assembly lines they are completely transformed in many social media platform you might have observed some short clip of mercedes benz or daimler uh, daimler manufacturing facility wherein your complete vehicle assembly is possible without a single human being intervention all the work like assembly painting all the works are done with the help of robotics sensors actuators computers and iot devices so this is very interesting area of research i hope all of you will debate on it and try to come out with a better solution another innovation with changing the landscape of manufacturing technology or you may say it is a para paradigm uh, component manufacturing is called 3d printing this is officially also known as the additive manufacturing industry 4.0 the tool enables the construction of various complex geometries which is otherwise not possible with the help of cnc casting and other conventional method you can say wire cut edm and other conventional method yes the metal or the plastic here used in the form of powder so that powder is fed and the layer by layer deposition is done with the help of software with the help of again mechanical actuators so layer by layer deposit will be done to come out with a 3d printed product the importance of this 3d printing is it can scale up the production at the same time it can save the weight also it can save the cost otherwise there is a huge cost involvement so if i refer some of the recent space applications wherein 3d printing is uh, widely used in india as well as in abroad so in automobile and space application it has great potential to explore further 3d printing technology so this is what my take about this conference that we should debate or rather we should provide our own new innovative ideas based on these technology so with this thank you so much jai guru pranam thanks a lot sir for your kind words and for gracing this occasion with the powerful discourse now now i would like to thank our chairman swami suddhanand giri ji a uh, special thanks to all the dignitaries a uh, special thanks to our vice chairman lieutenant general gyan bhushan sir a uh, special thanks to our vc dr ajit kumar sinha dr manish pratik sir and our secretary sir brigadier dr anil kumar sharma a uh, my special thanks to uh, dr shyam pandey sir our principal and other academic in charges now i would proceed towards our conference and it's my honor to invite our keynote speaker professor valentina emilia balas she is an eminent professor in oral blaisu university of arad in romania she is having the experience of nearly 30 years in this field and she has special skills in intelligent system and soft computing she also worked as an engineer in research institute for railway cars ma'am please grace this occasion with her presence audio is not available yes ma'am is not audible i think
रुकी रुकी Sorry for this interruption. I think we need some increasing voice in here. Thank you. 
en tierras extremas, 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 en tierras
with the effort of ideas in addition to the urban ones, can be stronger or more
sorry uh, for the voice breakage because emilia ma'am is traveling somewhere uh, so she couldn't join us live for this uh, conference and so she sent her recorded video sorry for the voice breakage and the interruptions now after i'm requesting all the audience uh, for a 10 minutes break and then we will continue our keynote session thanks to all ना <laughs>
Recording stopped. Now, I would request everyone to join. Start with the keynote address session now. I would request Dr. R.K. Divedi, Head of Department of Mathematics and uh, Director of MCA, Vinoba Bhave University, Hazari Bagh, to address the occasion with his valuable speech. He has many years of teaching experience. He has done dynamic research in optimizations and also guided 12 students for PhD. He has about 60 plus publication in diversified areas of mathematics and computer science in SCI, Scopus, and other reputed journals. He has also written several books in mathematics. Sir, please grace this occasion with your valuable presence. Recording in progress. Very good morning to everyone. As the anchor said, my area is optimization and computing. So optimization and computing both are being used in every walk of human life since very time. And we experience 
this application especially in the field of agriculture and money lending areas at the time when such techniques are not available in the literature existence of optimization methods can be traced to the days of newton lagrange cauchy with the development of different segments of calculus like differential calculus integral calculus differential equations but with the development of simplex method during world war 2 by denji and in the year 1957 by a dynamical programming by bellman the use of optimization taken also several methods are used to solve social problems scientific problems commercial problems some of the systems optimization for the implementation in the energy especially in the field of finance then the simple problem is what optimization is simple option is an act process or to get the best solution in the prioritize about the first approach in the field of optimization we simply implement the theory of layout in which an unique axial structural members are arranged to yield a minimum volume structure for a specified load and materials also a theorem was established by maxwell in 1854 and later developed by michael cox classical methods of optimization are used in finding optimal solution of several continuous and different or social or financial problems this also include I think sir is having some technical issues. Requesting him to requesting him to reconnect. requesting sir to join our session please
Sir, you are you are on mute. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So, with the help of computers and software engineering, now the optimization becomes so easy that we can solve all the problems in a few seconds. Okay. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah. Hello. You are audible, sir. Okay. Thank you. Are audible. So. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Lord is there. Okay, thank you, sir. We will remain grateful to you and thank you for your presence today. To adding a more value to this conference, I am having an honor to invite our next keynote speaker, Dr. Rick Das. He is a lead software engineer at Artificial Intelligence Unit Siemens with over 18 years of experience at industrial and academic research. He is conferred with the title of HCM Distinguished Speaker by the Association for Computing Machinery in New York. Sir has also chaired some multiple sessions in international conferences on machine learning and has acted as a resource person and invited speaker in multiple events and refresher courses on information technologies. Sir, kindly grace this occasion. Thank you very much uh, for this wonderful introduction. Hope I am audible to you all. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yeah. So, uh, at the outset, I would uh, like to express my uh, thanks to uh, Yagoda Satsang Mahavidyalaya uh, Management for uh, having me here today, uh, and also to Professor uh, Khushbu and her team for uh, arranging this uh, wonderful event and forward-looking event for sure. So, uh, like today, I will be <clears throat> discussing a bit on the trending aspects of uh, AI and like uh, what may be the opportunities for us to, uh, you know, <clears throat> for our, uh, let's say, uh, career uh, at this uh, at this juncture for using this artificial intelligence and things like that. So uh, how will we really look at it? And also how will, how shall we really think about it uh, to go uh, with it as a career option, as well as what really are the prospects in it, uh, given the current focus of our studies, um, you know, here. So since uh, the time is very short without, uh, you know, uh, wasting much time here, I will be starting my presentation and uh, here we go. So let's say uh, whatever things I will be discussing uh, in this uh, upcoming 5-10 minutes, that will be uh, entirely my personal view and has got nothing to do with my employer. Neither it has uh, got any relationship with my employer. These all are my personal views and opinions. All right. So... <clears throat> 
the agenda of this is to uh, you know understand the relationship so we all have a dilemma in our mind like uh, whatever we are learning in academia how far that is relevant in the industry or else how really we would like to have our uh, you know uh, share in the industry as soon as we move on to uh, industry from the academia as well as those uh, of us who are in the academia serving in the academia uh, whether they will be uh, you know fit for the industry or whether they should uh, change their career for industry or not there are a couple of things so since i have been in academia for quite a uh, you know uh, long amount of time of, of my career for almost 17 years and then shifted to industry and uh, i don't know in future where i will be whether industry or academia i depends but then uh, these two are of course uh, two different aspects and domain and we can have a different perspective for these two based on the fact that the relationship or the bridging between industry and academia is a task that is uh, that is really need to be uh, focused and uh, need to be taken care of with much effort and uh, you know much more of open mindedness so when i say this what i mean is that whenever academia is trying to embrace industry the academia has to be open minded and vice versa that is whenever industry is trying to embrace academia then uh, one has to be very open minded from the industry perspective or end as well uh, on top of that uh, you know <clears throat> you need to have a huge uh bent of mind uh, in terms of learning curve so that every day you learn and uh, try to deliver something new uh, which you have not done yesterday so uh, that is one of the mantras which you need to uh, you know imbibe in your mind and soul if you really want to be a flexible professional moving um, you know um, according to your will or wish from industry to academia or academia to industry now that artificial intelligence is the buzzword as well as we have heard a lot of things about machine learning uh, deep learning and stuff like that so obviously uh, this uh, particular things are having great demand in the industry in coming times at least in the current scenario now that uh, the, what are the different uh, places or use cases where we can really apply it so these are the basic concepts that machine learning or artificial intelligence is a broader domain within which comes the machine learning and deep learning is a special case of machine learning which is done automated so we can have a elaborate discussion on on this or you can get in touch with me for study materials on this and there are so many but then uh, by saying this what i am trying to say that there are several use cases in the industry that is being solved with the help of this for example there can be anomaly detection there can be classification object detection localization regression clustering these are the concepts based on these concepts we can solve different use cases when i say use cases what i mean to say is that uh, let's say when you are learning machine learning or python or for that matter any other language supporting this it's not that you are just uh, going ahead and moving ahead learning the language and learning some skills that how to code them but also to have a research bent of mind by because these do not have any uh, you know uh, any uh, like uh, prefix solution these are all solutions which you might have not done in your college not here in your school maybe uh, the client is coming up with some kind of a you know problem and then and there you have to design something as a solution so you have to have a very flexible bent of mind a flexible openness of mind by which Uh, you can uh, deliver certain things and uh, by which you have to be really careful while you are um, uh, you know uh, learning the things that not only emphasizing on the tools but to understand the concepts that what is applicable for what now these are certain things where you can use let's say anomaly detection use case is this where you can use a, a auto encoder kind of a scenario now that there can be sentiment analysis like whether it is positive neutral or negative things like that different types of use cases there can be object localization like for example this is an object this is a cat this is classification straight away now where is this cat located this is what is the localization then moving ahead what are the different things which are there so you can have object detection separately right this is dog this is cat things like that and then instance segmentation how much area it is actually covering so this is based on image data similarly on text data you can have this kind of things so on numeric data you can have anomaly and detection and things like so there can be several use cases like this but it is not that it is the only area where you should look for or ponder for working right because this has got several allied areas or several allied opportunities if you are really not liking this then also you can be a very in demand professional if you also 
explore these areas so this is segmentation so this is also a part of this what are the areas which i am trying to point out here the areas which i am trying to point out here is that there are couple of things which are known as devops and mlops so these are the basic things which you need to understand that is data version control and program version or code version control right so there is one thing you must be knowing like git okay so if this git is hosted in several hosting services like gitlab github and spaces like that so if you are aware that how to host and how to maintain different versions so that you can guide the software engineer you can become a project management professional so that you can become a scrum master even so these are the various other domains where you can work where you know that how to do the code versioning how to do the data versioning end to end pipeline so what do i mean that is when you look at the data and you look at the finished product on the cloud or on the edge how this entire production system will go because just doing a code is not going to you know fetch you the final product actually the code fails most of the time when it goes to production so if you are a good coder or if you uh, think that you have built a solution then you are way uh, you know uh, uh, you are way behind than what exactly solution is required from you hence what i am trying to tell here is that you need to understand that what solution it is not only the coding which is which is there the by coding you can prepare a solution but whether that solution really runs in the real time on the cloud whether you have the proper data for that whether your data because there will be data drift there will be concept drift today if you are deploying it in a system for the real time tomorrow the customer may uh, may be willing to have a different kind of data for which your system is not trained and your system will fail miserably so obviously you need to understand these things as the devops and you know ml ops kind of these are the emerging areas devops is already there but ml ops is an emerging area where you need to think of the release monitor plan and package so whenever you are creating a thing how you are monitoring how you are really uh, you know continuously improving this over the given amount of time so you can also explore your areas and your knowledge apart from machine learning deep learning concept learning to these areas like what is ml ops what is devops what is versioning control system what is the data versioning what is the code versioning how to do a end to end pipeline and things like that that will also fetch you very lucrative career opportunities all right and these are the futures like if you see the uh, you know curriculum of the upcoming uh, let's say iits or nits or any college or universities which are forward looking they are mainly incorporating these things in the form of cloud in the form of uh, let's say as i told project management and things like that and even in the form of uh, let's say devops and ml ops and uh, you know versioning control system and things like that which are becoming an in incredible and ingredient part of of your career if you are not really uh, accustomed with this then uh, sustaining in the industry even if you are a good coder becomes a real really challenge this is true for the you know students who are the freshers this is also true for the professionals who wish to switch from academia to industry or things like that so it is switching you may have the uh, switching opportunity any time but sustaining is different than switching all right so uh, with this i would like to end my uh, you know speech and i would like to thank you for your patient listening and in case you are having any question and answer you can go ahead with that uh, thank you very much yeah you are not audible uh, you are not audible okay sorry for this inconvenience yeah, no thanks a lot sir for this enriching conference and thank you for this powerful uh, presentation on artificial intelligence uh, thanks to dr r k devedi sir and thanks to dr rikta sir for being here with us today and enriching this conference with her presence thanking you a lot now thank you a lot thank you now i am having an immense pre pleasure in inviting dr priyanka shrivastava one of the very eminent associate professor of sarla billa university rachi she has 13 plus years of experience in reputed educational organization and she is also associated with exam department as assistant registrar and also handle the work of swayam she has been awarded with best paper award twice ma'am please grace this occasion with your presence thank you ma'am thanks a lot and namaskar to all the dignitaries and participants present over here 
and i am very much thankful to yogda satsang mahavidyalaya for giving opportunity on this speech on international conference with the theme innovative technologies and intelligent system so the world where we are talking about the technologies and intelligent system so the major concern is how we can maintain the privacy of our own confidential data which has been uploaded over the internet uh, as the time is very limited over provided to me so i am going to give a brief idea about the ongoing projects of maintaining the privacy of the data maintaining the privacy of the objects so i am going to share a screen with the presentation okay this presentation is uh, visible to you all no madam uh, please share your presentation yeah i hope now this is visible yes ma'am it is visible yeah so okay. this is actually a part of the funded project and here i am going to show you some idea about this privacy of objects see uh, one example i can give you uh, if i will play a card with my own friends i uh, using a virtual reality glass so uh, my surroundings my data is not confidential at all because of the algorithm that has been uploaded there aaj bhi chat i think some of us are unmuted so i would i would request the other problem there is problem speak and mute yourself dr ruchi gautam yes now it's okay so my uh, own data as well as uh, the content is not confidential over there so i need uh, some another algorithm over there so that my content over the internet over the surroundings uh, which has been uploaded over internet can be uh, privatized uh you can see the ne next one uh see uh here i am concerned about the two different things only a uh, fingerprint as well as the facial feature because you can see each and every content of ourselves has been uploaded over the internet whether it can be the passport it can be the aadhar it can be the details of the credit card our own educational certificates and everything has been uploaded uh obviously as sir has uh, told something about the artificial intelligence as well as the machine learning so um, the algorithm applies this concepts also uh, to maintain the privacy but uh, this presentation i am exploring only two classes one is the fingerprint and the second is the facial features uh, what about the fingerprint how we can maintain the privacy of the fingerprint there are a lot of different approaches to maintain the privacy of the fingerprint but simply we can uh, one of the approach uh, i will tell you that we can detect that part pull a fingerprint and if you don't want to disclose the other details so we uh, blur that fingerprint this this is a simple way uh this uh, you can see uh because why because everything now in fact the attendance of the in the universities as well everywhere fingerprint is one of the form of the biometric and we know that no two people have the same fingerprint in fact if the uh, if the persons are the identical twins even uh the face can be match uh, with some percentage but uh, fingerprint cannot be matched and if there is a matching in the fingerprint it means it is a matter of crime it is a scene of crime and here we uh, during the crime we discuss about uh, the another content finger mark and the latent print so uh, this project see how we are detecting the fingerprint first work is to detect the fingerprint and to then uh, apply the algorithm to blur them so this uh, for this ongoing projects uh, we have uh, we have taken the fingerprint from the database and this the eco hand database and then uh, we applied the yolo uh, v5 model and other models uh, so the, the the link has been given eco hands data set is with the indiana university we have taken and once we have detected if you can see the fingerprint is of two uh, different categories of work uh, we are working in fact in that it's a ongoing uh, work so one is the contactless fingerprint data set so again the link has been provided a uh, contactless uh, fingerprint data set it means uh, that uh, for giving the fingerprint we don't have to press uh, our hand or our fingers in, against any of the devices 
so uh, the uh, there will be the data set of the fingerprints without touching the device and another thing data sets we taken that is actually unfit uh, so these two data sets we are working so once uh, we applied the models so we seen the results that uh, we have detected the hands first we detecting the hands and then uh, from the hands we detecting the fingerprints so we have detected the maximum value have taken the one so we have detected the hands with the confidence level of 0.7 and once with the same hand with the value of 0.7 when we started detecting the fingerprints so the confidence level moves it's greater than 0.5 now once we have detected the hand as well as the fingerprints now we have to apply the algorithm to blur that particular fingerprint so we applied the gaussian blur uh, to maintain the privacy of the fingerprint by blurring that particular that's uh, that's just about the fingerprint now about the face how we can maintain the privacy of the face because there are face detection also uh, many of the things are being in fact uh, we, uh, we provide uh, security to our cell phone also with the face detection so how we maintain the if this face is has been uploaded over the internet again there is the uh, phase of how to maintain the security and privacy so this privacy can be maintained it is one of the approach there can be the several approach but one approach i am uh, dealing over here so uh, it can be maintained by mapping the facial images to the cartoon images so how we can map a particular face to the cartoon see this uh, mapping of facial to the cartoon this is known as unify the image see there is the image of a person in the unifying of the images that is the making the cartoon of that particular faces and then it can be uploaded and uh, other so there are the uh, model architecture so that i am not going to discuss at all because of it's uh, it's the major work how we will do all this thing see the data sets first we are using over here uh, we use the flicker faces uh, data sets and uh, this data sets uh, with the face samples for face samples we have taken and then we have uh, we did the we are doing the unifying the images by using the one of the open source tool uh, if you can see the current status till the work we did uh, we taken the data sets of the uh, with the size 15000 uh training applied and other model sets that has been applied to the 12000 and validation you can see the validation spew of content has been validated but yes uh, the value from the data set size to the validation is uh, um, the size uh, going to decrease at all but yes somehow we are unifying the images you can see the actual image and you can see uh, uh, upper part is the actual image and the lower part is that we find a unified image this work is ongoing uh, once uh, it will be uh, properly uh, done then the next step that we will move that will the face de identification you know how the uh, modulation demodulation works done in the same way once we are to refine the image we have to again uh, uh, move to the original image from the uh, cartoon image and that is actually known as face de identification again uh, one approach has been applied to how we can do the face de identification so um, uh, and the future work see once uh, that will be uh, de identification will be done then um, there will be the uh, we will apply the ethnicity and the we, we will work on the two different parts ethnicity and the gender so ethnicity you can say um, uh, collecting the groups and the sub groups with the same cultural background you can see here a uh, few of the examples i have given uh, giving here see uh, faces uh, the uh, we can say the indian faces we can say yeah uh, these faces are quite white faces these faces quite black faces so how we can uh, collect all this in that is uh, that is actually the ethnicity maintaining the ethnicity of the group of persons so this will be uh, ongoing work and uh, that's a brief uh, uh, idea about the work with the privacy of the objects uh, which has been uploaded over the internet which is actually not secure that's all thank you thanks a lot ma'am for this wonderful keynote session now uh, moving towards the articles presented over here by our esteemed professors research scholars and other academicians the very first list of articles are presented on the topic of automated technologies and its applications Uh, I would like to call the paper ID four nine one zero, Ashok Tarupal and Indrajit Pal to present their articles.
the paper presenter ashok tarupal and indrajit pal yes ma'am yes ma'am am i audible ma'am yes ma'am yes sir you are audible okay okay so let us first start uh, i would like to share my slides Uh, is it visible? Not yet, sir. Okay, just a minute. Uh, now I think it is visible. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay, uh, myself, Ashok Kuripal, uh, the research scholar of uh, Dr. DPJ Abdul Kalam University, Indore. So today uh, I am going to uh, present my paper, uh, Analysis of Machine Learning Classifiers for Fake News Detection, that is a data mining perspective. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, my paper uh, has been uh, Sequentially, uh, like abstract, introduction, objective, literature review, methodology, performance analysis, and conclusion, and then references. So, <clears throat> to my paper, uh, our paper is actually fake news. So today, nowadays, uh, this term is very popular right now because fake news is uh, it's a very rumor uh, that is being spreaded all over the world uh, through uh, through the media social media and any news articles okay so <clears throat> so we are actually uh, going to uh, analyze the different uh, uh, using some different machine learning algorithm to detect the fake news uh, to, to detect the fake news actually so many researchers uh, propose the machine learning uh, algorithm it's very few number of machine learning algorithms they have proposed for the fake news detection but in our work, we have used uh, six number of sub, uh, machine learning classification algorithm to detect the fake news like KNN, uh, support vector machine, decision tree, multinomial name based support vector machine, decision tree, and logistic regression, and also random forest. And we have uh, achieved a very promising uh, accuracy, but in case of KNN, we have not uh, got a uh, very promising result. Uh, okay. Because uh, this is not suitable, this KNN, uh, you know, this KNN is not suitable for this purpose because it's a huge data set. So that's it's proved that this will be not uh, applicable for the KNN. But in case of logistic degradation, multinomial name based decision tree, and random forest, we have got a very promising result. So, <clears throat> what is fake news uh, that I have already? Uh, told that it's, it's designed to deliberately spread hoaxes, propaganda, disinformation. And uh, it's a denotes a type of YOLO uh, journalism which intentionally presents misinformation. Okay, so often fake news will mimic real headlines and twist the story. Okay, so it is now society, it's a very uh, societal problem uh, nowadays. And the term fake means it's a news articles that are intentionally and uh, very difficult very favorably falls to design manipulate people's perceptions. Okay. So what is the reason for spreading fake news actually? So the reason fake news means to damage the reputation of a person's reputation of the uh, organization or any type of or any entity. Okay. So to harm the reputation of a person and also uh, uh, organizing sir, the fake news. There is a yes. problem. So please uh, have your screen like enlarge your screen. In like just in, in Roger's slide, yes, sir. Okay. No, how can you just screen control plus? Just do it. Okay. In the screen, sir. Yes, sir. Fine, sir. Thank you.
Is it visible? Yes, sir. It is visible and it is fine now. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, uh, different types of fake news like uh, that is clickbait propaganda, commentary opinion that we know actually. So, humor, uh, satire. Uh, these are the different types of fake news uh, that is being spreaded all, all over the uh. okay sorry 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 actually uh, okay. No. Sorry for the interruption. <coughs> so, coming to the introduction part that I have already uh, discussed, what is fake news and why it is being spreaded? What is the reason uh, for spreading the fake news actually? So, uh, and in the different types of fake news, Recording in progress. Whenever we go in a hospital and sometimes uh, uh, the there is a no, no critical situation of a patient, but sometimes doctor don't know what happened in, uh, with them. For that, the predicting predictive modeling. If we use the data science in that field, so our uh, health industry miss our uh, government also working on the. Uh, health card, Aishwaman Bharat health card also. This is the one of the best example of predictive modeling. <clears throat> computational phenotyping. The computational phenotyping, uh, it is the electronic health records are transferred into useful clinical concept through the process of computational phenotyping. The phenotyping theorems convert patient into phenotypes, which are term used in medicine. The primary function of this data is to catch recording in progress are producing data at the tremendous rate of rate that present many advantages and challenges at the same time. And the conclusion is data science is a solution which reshapes the pharmaceutical sectors, offer fresh perspective and meaningful insights and materialize brave concept, the future appears to be hopeful and bright. The revolution in fitness care may be required for bioinformatics, fitness informatics, and analytical analysis to promote individualized, individualized and more effective therapies. The reference we are taken from the support area. Yes. Now, what uh, technologies of data science you have applied for the predictive modeling, particularly for the predictive modeling that you have discussed? So, what technologies of data science you have applied that I want to? Uh, <coughs> Recording in progress. This is also the one of the uh, best example for the, the uh, in that industry uh, to helping the uh, patients. Uh, patient also and doctor also. 
Okay, but I suggest you to be a very much a specific with your work because uh, once you are talking about IoT, uh, another data science, so these are the broad. So be very much specific with your work. Okay, okay. thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, I would like to call Ashok Taru Pulsar again to finish his presentation. Can I stop, ma'am? Yes. Okay, ma'am. Thank okay. you so much. Uh, so, let us uh, share the screen. Yes, uh, is it visible? I think. Is it visible, ma'am? It is I, uh, It is visible. Sir. Okay. Okay. So uh, the text processing that I have already discussed, actually, normally in ML, uh, these are the text processing uh, for the you know, to build a model. Uh, so it's very normal. Uh, so next we are coming to the machine learning models. Normally, these are the machine learning models used. Uh, that is supervised, unsupervised, ensemble, neural networks, means for machine learning. But we have uh, only used uh, the supervised machine learning algorithms that I have already explained. So how supervised learning is actually uh, implemented, this is the uh, normally supervised learning is actually based on the level data. Uh, and we, uh, it, it get trains and the ML model uh, is built up and then we test the data actually. Uh, next, come to the unsupervised learning, uh, which is based on the unlabeled data. And uh, based on the unlabeled data, a machine learning model has to be uh, trained, and then we get the result. Machine learning uh, classifiers that we have used uh, in our uh, paper that is KNN. Uh, it's a uh, KNN is actually uh, uh, the nearest neighbor uh, uh, machine learning algorithm. Which is a very uh, popular supervised popular supervised uh, machine learning uh, algorithm. Popular uh, supervised machine learning algorithm, uh, and it is normally uh, this KNN is actually uh, used uh, for the purpose of very uh, not very huge number of data sets. Uh, though we have used about here, uh, but we have not got the very promising data. So next, uh, the logistic regression that we have used, uh, which is very uh, supervised, which is also very supervised learning algorithm mm -hmm. and the uh, classification problems we have dependent, it's a for the dependent variables uh, in a binary or disk format such as zeros or ones. Okay, Sir, so it's, it's please be yes. concise, we have only 10 minutes for each participant to complete their presentations. Okay, okay. so uh, so these are, I'm not uh, going into the details of the, all the ML algorithms uh, to come to the this is the performance analysis. Uh, we have tested our data. Uh, so, and you can see uh, the in MNB, uh, we have got the uh, performance of MNB uh, on the data sets like uh, the actually. Okay. So, in logistic regression, so we have got uh, like 99%. And the decision tree we have got nearly 100 percent okay and then uh, random forest uh, we have also got uh, and, uh, in the near future we the ensuing algorithms uh, we, will, uh, we will use uh, in the near future now uh, these are the references that i have followed references. Uh, yes paul sir i have few questions so uh you uh, yes. did the you did the analysis agile data set. So uh, can I apply agile data and see if it can, can be applied in such type of social network sites? Uh, yes, uh, it can be uh, used for, for the uh, in social media like Facebook. And uh, so have you tested with another social networking sites or another media except the Kaggle data set? Uh, so that's why. Uh, KNN has didn't get the very promising data. So once you so normally very small the small data sets this KNN is actually normally. Okay, so once the data but the size of the data set is forty four thousand as you said. Yes, yes. Yeah, forty four thousand. I guess it's not a small data set. It's a quite a good it's data a, set. Yes, it's a good uh -huh. data set. That's yeah. why. Uh, 
So once you will move for your future work, will uh, you going to apply only the KNN? No, no. Uh, at as it is not giving the very good results, so why should I use KNN or? So try to apply with other sites also. Okay, okay, definitely we will uh, okay. use. Uh, Also, uh, this is the acknowledgement. I, uh, my guy in Sungare, uh, I am appreciated uh, and gratitude. And my uh, fellow colleague, Dr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Indujit Pal, uh, he is my colleague, and he has uh, helped me a lot. Uh, also, from work model there, he has helped me also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, I will ask Dr. Uh, Sanjay Kumar to request. Piyush Raja, paper ID six seven three one, and please show it on the slide show because uh, uh, we need some large area to see this, to see the presentation. Piyush Raja, please show it. Hello, is my slide is visible? Yes, it is visible. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon to all. Myself is Pius Raja, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Core University, Roorkee, Uttarakhand. Thank you, Yugda Satsanga Mahavidyalaya, for giving me this opportunity to present here. A little interruption. Here, sir. Uh, sir, please show it in the slideshow. Okay, okay. Keep it in slideshow, sir. Okay. Next, uh, is uh, next slide is visible, ma'am? Visible, sir. Okay. These are the outline of my paper. Introduction, the approach of ML, the scenario of ML, operational uh, problems hello yeah. am i audible? Yeah, you are audible yes yes uh, then operational problems uh, non operational characteristic of uh, wireless sensor network particular exceptional limitation of, uh, for each application and then conclusion and the last one is references. So I am starting from introduction. The wireless sensor network is an easy to use architecture that makes gathering this sort of numerous data possible into uh, keep track of so, the surroundings and actively transfer their data to a central node or maybe this station, the wireless sensor network feature geographically scattered autonomous sensor. The WSN technology may be used for a wide array of use from ecological monitoring uh, to combat surveillance. Amongst a few of its advantages, are cheap cost, uh, simple deployment, uh, high quality sensing, and the ability to mobile and ad hoc networks to organize themselves. The use of a wireless sensor network presents significantly obstacles despite the many potential it offers. These difficulties are linked to certain features of the wireless sensor uh, network. Uh, the first one is the uh, endpoints employing battery have certain power utilization restriction. The second one is ability to deal with the disaster. Movement of the nodes, the blunders in transmission, adoption towards massive complex, the ability to withstand tough biological conditions. The next one is the approach of machine learning. Modern advantage in machine learning and soft computing techniques 
make it possible to build more useful vision designs utilizing a variety of characteristic uh the in the late 1950s over the years the focus has increasingly shifted and expanded to include algorithms that computation techniques that may improve the computer effect effectiveness and provide solution to the problem of data collection techniques that may enhance performance of machine learning the and defining similarities and uh, testing phase the scenario of machine learning for a wireless sensor network uh, the following list of three different machine learning techniques includes supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning the first one is a uh, uh, supervised learning in uh, supervised uh, the system model is created using the labeled training data which are known as outputs and present in uh, and preset inputs uh, the system model learns the link between uh, query processing event detection medium access control introduction or uh, detection below uh, the uh, supervised machine learning algorithms these are the algorithm the first one is decision tree the use of decision tree to solve various design issues in wireless sensor networks such as determining link dependent uh, dependability in uh, wireless sensor network using decision trees gives uh, a generic strategy for identify important link uh, characteristic such as low read and failure mean time the next uh, algorithm is uh, support vector machine support vector machine sbm allows for the discovery of specific temporal things in data by creating the collection of hyperplanes that device uh, that divide a uh, wireless sensor network data measurement in space by many margins as feasible the next one is neural networks one of the most common learning technique uh, for inferring uh, patterns from data is the use of neural network which are constructed with the aid of cascading decision unit also known as uh, perceptual and radial basis uh, function the identification of complicated and nonlinear connections in data is made possible by the cascading chains of decision unit however learning with the several cascading uh, chains requires a lot of computers the next algorithm is knn k nearest neighbor the knn our technique requires a little computer resources since the distance measured is calculated using a limited number of local uh, locations where the knn method is excellent for wireless sensor network query processing jobs because to its simplicity the next is uh, uh, unsupervised learning the next uh, next technique is uh, unsupervised learning the unsupervised machine learning sir, sir please be concise uh, we have only 10 minutes for each participant okay 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 uh, 
ओके ओके आई in unsupervised learning uh, we will uh, see uh, two algorithms uh, the first one principal component analysis and second one is uh, k means clustering and uh, third uh, technique is reinfo uh, reinforcement learning this kind of method of for learning in a wireless sensor network includes interacting with the um, uh, environment to gain knowledge here there is a benefits to play and a sensor node learns to take the best possible action to make sure the long term benefits are maximized over time the most well uh, known reinforcement, uh, reinforcement learning method for wsn routing issues is called q learning uh, next one is the operational problem the design of wsn has several operational or functional problem such as communication related concerns and decentralized administration in this uh, so we will see query processing and event recognition problems medium access control issues routing issues uh, in wsn concern related to object targeting and local clustering and data collection action improving quality of service and data entry get uh, in yes we, i just want to know you uh, deal about a lot of things so how uh, you are going to detect the uh, fraud because you told about a fraud detection spam detection so uh, which technology and what are the characteristics of computing technologies that you are going to apply for the fraud detection particularly for the fraud detection okay. you am i audible piyush raja Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, yes, ma'am. You are audible to us. Yes, uh, Mr. Pius, are you listening uh, our questions? Requesting your presence, Pius Raja, sir. Hello. He is here, I think. Yes, Pius, are you listening us? Some problem is there. Maybe I think that some problem is there. Okay, then we are going to the net. Okay, then I'm inviting the. Uh, to have a presentation uh, i am requesting uh, anchal kumari to pres to have a, her presentation here yes ma'am yeah please present your presentation here Ma'am, is my screen is visible? It is visible. Not. It is not visible. Only your name is visible. It is visible now. It is visible now. Anchal. Thank you. good morning to all of you and uh, thank you yogda sansad mahavidyalay for giving 
me opportunity to give presentation on my topic using machine learning to analyze diabetic disease for pregnant women and uh, we read this article uh, i read this article with the help of uh, dr rahul devsa assistant professor dr shama prashan mukherjee university and uh, dr rajin kumar mehto sir assistant professor of dr shama prashan mukherjee university so let's so i uh, start my presentation my topic is using machine learning to analyze diabetic disease for pregnant women my content is introduction then the value of data mining in healthcare review of current work proposed prediction system training and testing result analysis and the references so i start from introduction digital prediction is an important aspect of data mining in data mining various diseases such as uh, lung cancer breast cancer thyroid disease diabetes and so many diseases are predicted diabetes prediction are examined in this paper and uh, diabetes mellitus is classified in four categories generally type 1 diabetics type 2 diabetics gestational diabetics and congenital diabetics and uh, the most common diabetics is uh, the most types are these four types and most common is diabetics mellitus and um, uh, the diversity and applicability applicability of data mining in the field of medical science for disease prediction is going by uh, growing by the day the discussion applies classifiers selection based classification to medical disease data and proposes a classifier selection method based on clustering clustering is the technique uh, many clusters are chosen for an uh, enable process in this in the method the standard presentation of each classifier on each cluster is then calculated and uh, the classifier with the best average performance is chosen to classify the given data the weighted average technique is used to compute the normal act and the distances between the given data and each selected cluster are used to calculate weight values multiple classifiers can be combined in two ways selection and fusion the selection of multiple classifiers assumes that each classifier has expertise in some local regions of the feature space and seeks to determine which classifier has the highest local accuracy in the vicinity of an unknown say test sample and the classifier is then chosen to make the system's final decision the classifier's performance is frequently the most important aspects of its value and it is measured using a variety of well known methods and matrices and uh, as a result some old methods focus on learned classifier knowledge or transforming non knowledge classifiers into human knowledge structure then we come to the next the the value of data mining in healthcare in general uh, all the healthcare organizations around the world kept healthcare data in electronic form healthcare data consists primarily of information about patients as well as patients involved in the healthcare industry the storage of such data is rapidly expanding and uh, a level of complexity exists in electronic healthcare data as its size grows over the time in other words we can say healthcare data has become extremely com complex it becomes very difficult to extract meaningful information from it using traditional methods however um, thanks to advantages advanced in statistics 
mathematics and uh, other fields it is not possible to extract meaningful patterns from it and uh, when large collection of healthcare data are available data mining can be very beneficial recently researchers have used data mining tools in a distributed medical environment to provide better medical services to a large proportion of the population at a low cost improve customer relationship management manage healthcare resources more effectively and so many it provides meaningful information in the field of healthcare that can be used by management to make decisions such as staff estimation health insurance policy decisions treatment selections disease disease predictions and uh, now we come to the review of current work in the a novel cl cluster oriented example classifiers presented in the paper uh, the paper is cluster oriented example classifier impact of multi cluster characterization on example classifier learning this cluster oriented example classifier is based on original concept in which the base classifier learns cluster boundaries and uh, the fusion classifier maps cluster confidences to the class decision an example classifier is built using a set of base classifiers that uh, learn the class boundaries separately over the pattern according to the paper learning class boundaries between overlapping classes is a difficult problem because this issue is inherent in inherent in all base classifiers a bagging predictor is a method for uh, generating multiple versions of a predictor and then arguing them are getting them and uh, the paper analysis of bagging as a linear combination of classifiers describes how an analytical framework for analyzing linearly combined classifier is applied to bagging assembles the result in a novel analytical model of bagging misclassifications probability as as a function of inevitable size and uh, an and implication of data diversity for a classifier free assembly selection in random subspecies subspecies as uh, assemble of classifiers that is eoc has been shown to improve the performance of signal classifiers by combining their outputs the goal of pattern recognition system is to achieve the highest classification performance possible the major drawbacks of linear dim dimensionality deduction algorithm such as principal component analysis that is pca and uh, linear decrement analysis that is lda are that the projections are a linear combination of all the original features or variables and uh, all weight uh, weights in the linear combination known as loading and typically non zero and um, the named is symbol towards a structural characterization of the classification boundary as a novel binary discriminative learning technique based on a piece wise linear smooth adaptive model approximating the non linear decision boundary now we come to the next proposed prediction system and the heavy design data mining approaches for system building uh, we created a data mining tool geared towards data analysis it has uh, a simple interface uh, that's so uh, as shown in figure it consists of six steps uh, that makes data mining techniques easier to use this tool has been integrated into the environment define the first to is define the problem first which is identifying the data mining objectives and uh, second one is identifying the required data which is then assessed collected and understood and uh, following that we select required data for cleaned cleaned and formatted data as needed for the 
data pre processing and uh, the following process uh, and the uh, process of creative sub sum model for selecting algorithm for building predictive models and it has the ability to create or maintain courses as well as perform all data mining processing through the same interface for training and testing the models with uh, sample data sets for testing and uh, iterates which is a framework for building data mining models such as classification degression clustering pattern mining and so many things and uh, these are the steps the or approach for system building data mining approach for system building and uh, next is uh, uh, result analysis uh, in the research in our research paper uh, three uh, three positive uh, cross validation uh, that um, uh, three models we have predicted cross validation for k fold 5 svm true positive and false positive result and uh, these are the three results and uh, uh, our references thanks to all Yes, ma'am. Uh, you did the work. Uh, I mean, you have applied with the pregnant women only, or you have applied with the other uh, data factors also. Ma'am, uh, here we use uh, or uh, analyze uh, or predict only for pregnant women, but we can use uh, data mining for all for multiple diseases, just like uh, breast cancer or thyroid. No, that's all. But uh, how many data sets of pregnant women you have taken for your work? I mean, uh, uh, in reality, you have uh, moved to the pregnant women and did the work, or you have no, ma'am. Okay. No, it's for it's not a real work. I yes, uh, Next thing is once you have analyzed your work, the result has been given. So, what is the comparison of the traditional method and your work? So, what yes, is the differences between a traditional and your work? The result only with the result. Uh, ma'am, in our work, we use data mining to analyze. Uh, in that, uh, that is the procedure. That is the procedure that you are applying. Okay, that the procedure methodology that you are applying the data mining. I am asking that once you have done with your work, do you have some result has been uh, came. So, what's the difference between the result or with your work and with the uh, I mean uh, with the technologies that is going uh, traditional technologies? Is there any difference with the result? Um, yes, ma'am. Some differences uh, that uh, uh, in traditional, it is difficult to find uh, uh, some uh, complexity arises, and uh, with the help of data mining, it's it become easier to predict the. No, how, how uh, many of the times you can see in the hospital also everywhere the traditional methods with the same machines, it's going to detect the diabetes. So. Uh, I just want to know where is the difficulties. Uh, I, you are telling it's difficult to find it. All the hospitals and everyone is uh, doing the task with the same machines only. No one is going to apply this data mining approach. So all are getting the uh, reading of the diabetes. So how it is different? Maybe your work is ongoing. So a few other results you will definitely get and then you will answer it appropriately. So uh, you go ahead and uh, we need the appropriate answer with the specific part. Okay. Okay, ma'am. So, thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, now I would like to invite paper ID 1530, Ashwin Kovindu, to present her article. Yeah. Ashwini Mohite, are you here? Mm -hmm. Ashwini Mohite, you are not here. Okay. So now I am moving forward. Now I am moving forward. Uh, to paper ID 3204, Dr. Ruchi Gautam to present her paper.
Dr. Ruchi Gautam, are you here? Doctor, yes, I'm there. Okay, okay. Uh, is my screen visible? Visible. Yes, it is visible. Yeah. So, uh, first for giving me an opportunity to present this paper on robotic process automation and e-commerce. Uh, thank you all the dignitaries present and all the keynote speakers who have shared their thought. I can see all of you are from computer and highly technically able people. I'm the one who is out of place because my <laughs> uh, core area of expertise in e-commerce and uh, management. But nevertheless, I have inkling towards uh, technology and I thought of writing paper. So I thought of a topic uh, called robotic process automation because this is a software that is commonly used nowadays to cut short the time that is being taken by people to do the same amount of job. We all know e-commerce, whichever company has an e-commerce or any for that matter, whether it is IT or apparel business, or even if you're trying to sell some fruits and if you, if you have it online and if you have a software, that would automate your process and a lot of your billings and other uh, works, delivery and all will be automated. And the, 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 the chances of making mistakes or probably order when the orders are placed and you are, you are not uh, able to create that order ID, all of that, uh, the chances are going to be very, very less. So when I did this survey, I realized uh, three of the most widely used RPA tools are Blue Prism Automation Anywhere and UI. And UI was one of the nascent ones uh, that was uh, long back the blue prism and automation anywhere. Uh, so if I, if I have to give a brief description of blue prism, blue prism mainly works on C, C++, C sharp programming languages. And it was introduced way back in the year 2000. And it has been uh, actually very proactively adapted by many reputable organizations like Infosys, Wipro, they have all worked in this technologies. So is the case with automation anywhere also. Uh, automation Anywhere is a very recent tech, uh, recent uh, software that was launched in 2019, but people have taken this uh, hands-on and uh, it's also being widely used in various uh, companies which are uh, using e-commerce or IT, all of that. Now, in order to, uh, the purpose of this study was to understand which uh, RPA tool is being effectively uh, which which RPA tool uh, gives uh, what kind of uh, benefits over the other RPA tool that is available in the market. And uh, so both the uh, research methodologies were used for this purpose, that is primary and secondary research. So for primary, we aimed at a data a set of 40, and that too, uh, we actually aimed at purposive sampling, but purposive sampling did not work out. Uh, uh, so we had to go for random sam sampling because people who were ready to give us the data, which was filled online, by then we had to go ahead with that. So it was more of a uh, random sampling that we use for this. And uh, also various journals uh, on Google Scholar and Scopus were uh, studied from 2019 to 2021 to understand the most recent advancements in this RPA automation. And uh, so the, as, as I mentioned, uh, we intended at about 40 to 50 data sets, but we could only get 30 two responses because we wanted people who had exposure to both Blue Prism and uh, Automation Anywhere uh, so that they can give us a clear understanding of uh, how they fare in terms of scalability, security, uh, whether a nascent user or somebody who's got no exposure to programming will be able to use that or with ease or not, security threats, all of that. Now, uh, our survey showed us, the primary survey that showed us the result was 72% of the respondents uh, who filled up our data were in the age group of 31 to 40 and the rest 28% uh, were below 30 and uh, most of the most of the respondents were and the uh, very uh, only uh, uh, sorry there's a mistake 66.6% uh, not 6.67 were male and the rest were female now again uh, when we ask them about the accuracy uh, clearly automation anywhere had a clear lead over blue prism same with case of uh, 
uh, what were the use when i say ease is basically if if i do not know much about programming language and i have given some hands on training whether whether i'll be able to adapt so here also automation anywhere was a clear cut winner based on the feedback given by the people who had used both automation and blue prism in their organizations and uh, from security point of view uh, automation anywhere again uh, is a market leader right now based on the feedback that we received now when came uh, when it came to the scale scalability because a uh, lot of people had uh, on a likert scale of 1 to 5 they were not able to identify which one to go for so 46% respondents were highly satisfied with the scalability of blue prism whereas uh, uh, only 6% of respondents felt the same uh, about automation anywhere uh, uh, so now coming back coming to the recording facility uh, recorders that these automation tools use whether it is blue prism ui or automation anywhere uh, again here uh, automation anywhere was leading with 84% 84 responses and in terms of reliability uh blue prism was uh, uh at 68% whereas only 6% were highly satisfied with the reliability of automation anywhere and uh, so coming uh, based on the responses and the literature that we read is uh, uh so it depends on the need of the organization so if you are a very very large organization clearly automation anywhere is being used by most of these organizations and blue prism is taking a backward seat not because they are not able to scale up or automation uh, blue prism but because there are a uh, lot of security issues in blue prism and also the ease with which you can use automation anywhere is missing in blue prism so that was uh, clearly one of the conclusions that i would like to highlight here yes ma'am you did the summary of the users of blue prism and auto sorry ma'am can you be a louder please am i right sorry yeah you you did the survey you did the survey with the users of blue prism yes yes so, so basically the sample right? size was the sample size was 32 and this was sent across to various uh, organizations through the contacts that i have so in that uh, if if suppose there is a company called landmarks landmark is extremely into e-commerce domain and landmark operates not just in india but outside india also so it is it, it's got major presence in the gulf so and uh, i could easily get people who had worked on automation and blue prism both the softwares uh, from there i could collect data then one of okay, how you have identified that that particular person is the user no, of no, so management. the first question data in my was that please fill up the survey only if you have experience of both if if they were not their responses were not so that's what i said ma'am the data sets were only restricted to 33 because none of out of the 60 responses only 32 could match our criteria so we filtered that and we did not use their responses in our analysis Okay. The second thing, are uh, you use the different RPA tools for different uh, activities? Yes, okay. ma'am. Uh, so, uh, how many RPA tools you have explored? So, ma'am, in this while we were doing literature study, we did study about three, four. But uh, in terms of comparison, we were only restricting it to Blue Prism and uh, Automation Anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, when we, when I was doing the research, and I then read about UI path. agro labs all of that okay the next thing in your uh, work you have mentioned that you have uh, explored the journals and papers from 19 to 21 so yeah, yeah. once we are in the era of, uh, i mean it's uh, 23 so you have not uh, explored any of the work of of the year uh, 22 ma'am honestly uh, because of the time limitation i restricted because with the recent papers from 22 to 23 are voluminous compared to the earlier so this is one of the limitations of my study because when i was looking at the research papers in 22 alone and 23 in the first quarter itself more than 100 journals are there okay you have uh, you have submitted your thesis i think yes yes okay so go ahead with the recent work also yes yes i will do that ma'am thank you. thank you ma'am thank you thank you priyanka ma'am and uh, now we will take 10 minutes break and after 10 minutes we will start track 2 cloud iot and big data analysis 
thanking everyone so ma'am at what time we are going to start after 10 minutes one uh, we will start by 140 we'll have recording stopped thanking everyone we will start after 10 minutes Ruchi Gautam, madam, please uh, close your uh, PPT.
welcome everyone now i would like to call those who have their articles on the theme of cloud iot and big data analysis uh, i am inviting code paper id 9750 cyan mandal to present the paper requesting cyan mandal hello hello yes you are audible uh, yes ma'am is my screen visible yes it is visible okay ma'am thank you please Can all start this presentation uh, please on your video also okay sir uh, is it visible sir hello uh, hello yeah yeah yes yes is it visible sir yes yes okay thank you sir so uh, good uh, good afternoon everyone this is amrin and i am an assistant professor at jharkhand rai university and uh, my co authors are uh, professor anuradha sharma she is also an assistant professor at uh, jharkhand rai university and we have with us uh, mr sayan mandal so we are here to give a survey report uh, a presentation on the survey on cloud security issues and techniques using cloud computing so starting uh, starting sam can you move the slide ha uh, uh, so let's move on to the abstract so our abstract is that what is cloud uh, what is cloud security and how we can improve the cloud security uh, using some mechanisms and uh, what are the issues that uh, we face in our day to day life in the while using the clouds so uh, we know that nowadays in uh, cloud computing it is an emerging uh, emerging uh, way of computing in computer science and uh, also in every area such as in uh, research area in academics in business we use cloud in our day to day life for storing of data as it is a third pa uh, third party uh, uh, it, it it's a third party function so uh, we use it so can you move to the next one so uh, the contents of this slides are introduction issues solutions and conclusion so moving to the first one that is our introduction part that is our introduction part ha huh. send back ha huh. next Yes, yes, yes. This one, this one. Ah, huh. so uh, about uh, cloud computing, it uh, it means that uh, it is of storing data, managing data, and as well as accessing the data from any remote location. So as we know that uh, uh, our computer system is limited, and we have very uh, less amount of storage and uh, networking devices and functions in our personal computers. So to enhance it, we use cloud uh, cloud computing. and uh, this uh, this this area the area of storage is uh, in cloud uh, there are uh, various uh, types and as well as there are various services uh, we uh, uh, we can move to the services next one yes these are the services so uh, we have three that is saas uh, saas ias and pas so first one is software as a services so in software as a services we know that uh, it is uh, basically about the software which we use that means it is used by the end users so in this uh, it is platform de uh, depend independent and uh, we can use in our any of the android pcs uh, mac os windows the second one is platform as a services so in platform as a services we use uh, this is this is used by the developers to uh, um, uh, to execute or to run any program in the runtime environment and the third one is Uh, IAS that is as infrastructure as a services which is used by the system administrators or the network administrators and a uh, uh, few of the examples of these are AWS uh, in which uh, uh, we have EC2 EC2 which uh, which is used for virtual uh, photo editing and this so moving to the next slide we have uh, yes types of uh, cloud so there are basically four types of cloud the first one is public private Uh, third one is hybrid and the first one uh, and the fourth one is uh, is the slide yes ha uh, the slides and the fourth one is community um, cloud 
so uh, getting to the first one the public cloud it is uh, accessible to all and it is uh, uh, it can be used by anyone uh, such as uh, we are using our gmail and the storage our our data or our drive data is, it all is stored in gmail uh, so, uh, second one is uh, the the private cloud is on, is used for the uh, any particular organization or any business uh, 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 organization or any business uh, I think uh, the screen is not visible, Sam. No, it's visible. Okay, yeah, uh -huh. huh. now it's visible. So the second one is private cloud. It is for some uh, organizations or some universities in which it is a limited one for uh, using in the organization. The third one is hybrid. It is uh, the mix of public and private cloud. And the fourth one is community cloud. So, so in community, suppose that uh, every organization or uh, let's take an example of university. If uh, there are uh, n number of universities and all are having same uh, types of uh, things to do or uh, the functions are same. So we used to develop a cloud which is common for all the universities. And uh, through this, we can this uh, cloud community community cloud can be used. So uh, let, let's move to the next. So coming to the. Thank you, sir. Now I'm going to discuss the issues which are available in the cloud security. Sian, could you please change the slide? I think due to some technical issues, the slide is not getting changed or it will change. I think it will take some time. So I'm going to discuss what are the issues or challenges associated with the cloud security? There are major issues. It may, it, it, these issues may occur due to the infrastructure, how we assess or modify the data, or how the uh, these data are assessed. So the first issues that is available is the data breaches. That means hacking of data. As many users are storing their data on the cloud and there are service providers. So in between assessing the data and uh, modifying the data, the cyber criminals are present, which may use this data or may they modify the important data. So one of the major issue with the cloud computing security is the data breaches. As we can see through the graph, which is uh, available in the screen, that from the year 2005 to 2017, how there is a huge amount of data loss if the, we are storing our data in the cloud. Madam, your slide is and not visible. Here we can see that. Yes, sir, there is uh, some issue. Even I can find out that the slides are not moving. Okay, no problem. Continue, please. Sir, uh, yes, sir, Sian is rejoining. Okay. I think there is some technical glitches because of that. Um, the screen is not available. So we are rejoining and hope the screen will be visible. Okay. Recording in progress. Sorry for this delay, but just we are trying to reconnect. Madam, you can continue with uh, your information, the content.
So if we talk about the issues or what are the challenges with the cloud security, the main issue is the data breaches. That means the hacking of data. While assess assessing the data or while storing the data in the cloud, there will be a loss of data. The hackers may hack this data. So we need a proper security mechanism so that there can not be a loss of important data. The second issue is the insecure API. As we know that the users store their data on the secure on the cloud and there are service provider which provide the services and through internet we have to assess these services. So while assessing these services, we require some APIs or interfaces. And there is a chance that cyber criminals may attack on these APIs or in interfaces. So we need a secure API and interfaces. The next issue with the cloud security is the misconfiguration. As during the configuration, there should be a proper configuration of the cloud. If there will be a misconfiguration, there will be a chance of leakage of the data, which is a very important data. As we know, we stored a huge amount of data on the cloud. So proper configuration should be there. The other issue is the denial of services. It is one of the major issue in the cloud security. And why this happened? It, it is just because a traffic is created what services we need to take from the cloud during the assessing of the services, the hackers, what they do, they create a traffic over there. Actually, there is no any traffic, but the hackers um, just uh, create a scenario that it looked like the whatever the services we want to avail, we were not able to take it, those services from the cloud. So this is also uh, a proper mechanism should be there. And other issues which are available with the uh, uh, available are like vendor lock-in, data breaches, data confidentiality and integrity is also one of the major issues which are available in the cloud computing. Now, our next member, Mr. Sian, is going to deal or discuss what are the solutions available against these issues like misconfiguration, encryption, or data loss, APIs. So I hand over the session to Mr. Sian, and he will explain further what are the solutions available against these challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Anadamu. I'm going to discuss solutions like privacy, right? In if we remember, like in 2019, a Facebook data breach has excuse me, please, Mandalji, please on your uh, video also. Okay, sir. I am visible, sir. No. Yes, visible. I am visible, sir. Please continue. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, what we can do for the for securing our cloud data? Like we love secure. 
like in current scenario we can we can see like lots of attack attacking data data warehouse and databases so like i am to discuss some solution so first of all solution is encryption we can use encryption encryption can help data which is inside the threads and in secure data providing which is partially import from sensitive data such as financial personal information like if we say whatsapp whatsapp use enter encryption that's why we love in whatsapp because it's totally secure platform the facebook this does not provide us to encryption so that's why like all that's why 2019 if i remember the database has met and the other one is network security network security is necessary in cloud computing to protect against external and insider threats ensure the data data privacy compliant regulation like firewalls vpn access control that can we access them and the other is regular update so regular updates and patches are necessary for os applications databases and virtualization in software used in cloud computing without regular updates and patches cloud infrastructure and services can be unsafe to secure threats because regularly introduce uh, like viruses and data which is happened so excuse me yes ma'am so please be kind of in concise because uh, now uh, we have another presentation also and we have to conclude it in 10 minutes okay, just 2 minutes more. yes 2 minutes okay conclude it in 2 minutes okay okay so other other option is backup and disaster recovery so backup and disaster recovery are essential components of cloud computing that ensure data protection and business continuity in outage of disaster so copy of copy of data like we can send sort so other we can do in like aws in azure in google cloud we all know that so training and awareness is most important thing training and awareness in cloud computing are essential for organization to understand the risks and benefit benefit of cloud services use these services safely and effectively with regular update and respond to client okay so what conclusion so in conclusion is cloud computing has revolutionized that way organization operate and manage their it infrastructure but it also introduces new security challenges cloud in security issues such as data breaches unauthorized access service disruption and a request have become critical becoming organized that are that are doing cloud complete cloud yes sir you are finished with your that's all, uh, all about yeah. yes ma'am i can't hear you you are finished with your presentation now you can yes. hear me now yes so in your paper yes, i can uh, i can see you that uh, it's another uh, neither of your contribution has been presented over here uh, means uh, what sort of paper is it is it a review i cannot see any of the review or what is the purpose of this uh, uh, paper what you will uh, resolve to the society by this research article and i mean okay. Uh, yes okay Yes, ma'am. There is a survey on cloud security and technique using cloud computing. So, how can we secure our data, our in cloud no. system? So that you is the survey the, and solution. You, you did the survey study of all the security aspects. Yes, that's all. Okay. So yes, once in your yes, presentation also you have deal about misconfiguration. So many of the times in our laptops and uh, uh, systems also we got the message of misconfiguration. So what is the main issue because of which misconfiguration happens, and how we can resolve the misconfiguration? So mean mis in misconfiguration has happened when our network glitches and all over thing. So mis if we if we like see the misconfiguration option, so then we can use. network security provide network security issue so we can use like 
access control and all over the to resolve the issue misconfiguration uh, i may suggest you that uh, you have deal uh, you all have deal about many of the issues so you can move forward with any one of the issues and uh, track to give a particular resolve how we can resolve all that issues there are the existing uh, technologies and existing methodologies to resolve that issues so you can create or you can have the review uh, of that all things with a good papers okay uh -huh. that will be my suggestion okay okay thank you ma'am thank you ma thanks a lot for this presentation now i would like to invite uh, paper id 0579 pooja jha uh, because of some technical issues pooja jha has sent her powerpoint presentation uh, she couldn't be here live for uh, this presentation so here presenting her uh, here her article all the gentlemen and the ladies uh, and i welcome you on an international conference on innovating technologies and intelligent uh, systems that is icitis of uh, 2023 uh, it's uh, afternoon of 24th february and 2023 I am Pooja Kumari Jha, and my research is scholar at Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam University, and my guide is Dr. Deepika Patak, and we have done a research study on cost prediction of serverless computing applications. And today, I'm going to talk uh, something about that particular topic as a paper presentation. I once again welcome all the dignitaries and all the uh, gentlemen and. Uh, the seniors uh, who have already an experience uh, in uh, it and uh, science and uh, i'm very thankful to the uh, ca it department of ysm for giving me this opportunity uh, the, the topics which is to be discussed today i will be i would be introducing my topic first and then uh, what work has been done uh, on this topic previously that also will be discussing uh, minutely uh, we will be discussing about the technique about the auto scaling uh, next we'll be discussing the costing techniques and pricing models which are discussed which are already um, in the market and what i am proposing and uh, sorry we are proposing uh, for this pricing models uh, then we will compare between the pricing models which are, which are, which is proposed and uh, uh, we will conclude the topic and uh, open i will open it for the future uh, work to be done and references so let's start with the root of cloud computing as we know already um, all of us are using clouds right now on our phones uh, so there are discussion there are many characteristics of cloud computing which uh, on which the main uh, the main characteristics are on demand self service um, broad network access resource pooling rapid elasticity and measured service um uh, we i will be discussing briefly about all of them uh, on demand self service would be uh, like uh, the consumers need uh, some of the resources and uh, um it is automatically put in the system uh, to fulfill the demand whenever it is it occurs and uh, this is done by the service providers who are providing our cloud uh, next is broad network access that means when we are using a uh, cloud computing then we do have an access of a broad network and um, will be uh, used as um, It will be used as a very good service provider for other networks also, which are connected. Uh, next is resource pooling. Resource pooling means it can provide resource like infrastructure. It can provide resource like functions. It can resource provide resource that a development environment. It can provide a resource of storage areas and all. So uh, this is a very um, helpful uh, area for our uh, a very helpful feature. a characteristic of cloud computing uh, now we will come uh, to a major uh, 
point of cloud uh, computing that is rapid elasticity the elasticity means that um, uh, the demand and the supply uh, would be changing according to the uh, market need uh, so consumers do need some of the resources uh, for a particular time and uh, after that they won't be needing uh, that particular resource rather they would be needing another thing so rapid elasticity means it will the uh, fluctuate um, means, uh, if you have to submit uh, the, you have to submit as a consumer you have to submit to the um, uh, service providers the demand of your uh, Uh, demand of your resources uh, in coming time or uh, for a particular time and according to that measurement the services will be provided to you uh, so these routing works and uh, these particular problems do occur and is are occurring right now in the market and uh, next the related topic which is serverless computing uh, serverless computing trends being occurring uh, yeah or being occurred on the same uh, time so and this is a uh, um, uh, serverless computing is a small part of all this event driven things and there are many other services which are uh, which are which works or many other computing techniques which do work on event driven uh, scenario uh, now um, when whenever um, there is a part uh, there is a um, need in the market about um, some some kind of resources or some kind of activities or some kind of programs or storages uh, so that would be uh, that would be uh, designed as such uh, something occurs like uh, when there is a query let's say there is a query and there is a uh, query for some resources and uh, because of that query has occurred uh, some other particular uh, thing is uh, some other particular um, uh, event uh, or the program executes this kind of computing is even so why uh, function as a service is a part of it function is and consumer ration, rationing risk and dynamic uh, pricing firm is uh, firm delays its pricing decisions until up after market revealed its conditions uh, and again about fixed pricing it is easier to understand and more forthright for the user dynamically pricing it's fair for consumers uh, but it is uh, very complex for uh, calculating the usage uh, fixed pricing it supports the securities it is more stable and it reduces the risk dynamic pricing supports provider to maximize profits with each consumer in fixed pricing model makes profit estimation easy and in dynamic pricing model model setting price based on the current state of the market and sometimes it is it can be advantages sometimes it can be disadvantages um, Uh, so uh, we come to the conclusion now in this research we examined the issue of optimizing the price and uh, execution type of uh, serverless computing uh, we proposed a system to foresee the expenses of uh, serverless work processes the cost expectation gives by our given by the our methodology empower the work processes architect to assess and think about work process choices our methodology speaks to the initial move towards fully automated work process enhancement dependent on multi target streamlining strategies uh, uh, and uh, last but not the least the future work we, we will explore approaches to anticipate the effects of various memory sizes on the presentation of serverless functions uh, i do expect questions now please any questions you can ask me and there thanks to all the dignitaries uh, chairperson vice chancellor guest uh, of honor and uh, academicians and other participants who have participate in participated in this conference and uh, making it a successful one thanks to all a uh, special thanks to our chairperson uh, priyanka shivastha
ma'am uh, we will continue with uh, our next day presentation next day conference on 25th february from 10:30 am onwards and uh, the link is there in minute to minute details thanks to everyone thank you ma'am recording stopped